Hello again, Ken from Park Hill Auctions and the Resellers Network. Every week we talk about a different topic and this week's topic is how to sell tools. So whether you're a reseller or whether you're just cleaning out grandpa's garage, there is definitely a market for reselling tools. So if you're only gonna be selling tools once, if meaning you know if you're moving or you're downsizing or you have an estate that you're selling, um, and it's just going to happen one time, then you know you can utilize tools like eBay completed listings to be able to help you determine what the value of some things are. So when people come to your sale, uh, you know what to ask uh, for things and have an idea of what they're worth. It's a good place to start. I, I, I meet clients all the time and they say, well, you know, um, I, I really want to get this because I saw it on eBay, you know, for this much money and I think you should pay me that for it. Well, that's the wrong answer. Number one, you really never can use eBay what's currently for sale as a comparative value. Um, you have to look at completed sales. You have to look at sell-through. You have to look at what are people actually paying for these things and how often are they selling. That's what's important. Um, somebody can ask anything they want, but that's not typically the true value. If you're a reseller and you're going to be selling tools on a regular basis, then you have to ask yourself, do I want to just sell all tools in general? Or do I want to specialize and work in a niche market? The upside of working in a niche market is that you'll be a specialist in that category and you'll know exactly what the value is when you see it or spot it when you're outsourcing your tools. The downside is that being a specialist in a niche, it's a lot more difficult to find the specific items that you sell or resell. So a tool like this, this vintage 1970s Craftsman circular saw made out of solid metal, you know, would I sell that online? Well, probably not. And I'll tell you why. Because the new tools are so much better and so much lighter. And a tool like that, even if I were to only sell it for say $25, um, I gotta ship it. So, you know, it's heavy, it goes in a big box, it's gonna cost $30 to send it, you know, across the country. You know, now the buyer is into it for, you know, $50, $60. If I'm a contractor or a tradesman, I'm probably gonna buy a new tool. I'm gonna to buy a Milwaukee or something. I may spend $100, $150, but you know what? Maybe even more. It's, it's gonna be light and it's going to be um, uh, just a, a, a easier to use all day long, you know, and not make my arm sore from cutting boards. And it's not gonna burn up. Uh, I'm probably gonna get some life out of it. So, you know, your resale value on something like this, there just really isn't as much of a market for something like this. It's really hit or miss. You, it takes time to develop enough knowledge to be able to figure out what tools sell well and what tools don't. Um, we've got about 25 years of the resale business, 20 to 25 years reselling. We know what has a good sell through and what doesn't. So when we're you know picking estates or working with consigners to sell stuff, we know what to take and what our buyers want. So if you're going to sell tools, you have to break them down into different categories. There's new tools versus old tools. There's antique tools versus contractor and power tools. There's all different types of tools and it's best if you break them down and separate them into different groups. So what do you sell your tools? Well, there's several different avenues for you to sell tools. In our case, we have an auction house and we put these large lots of tools together for our resellers and for our retail buyers where people can buy their tools to, to resell them online or um, or, or, or to buy them to use them because they're a good deal. So what are some of the best ways that you can sell tools? Okay, well, there's, uh, there's eBay. We've talked about eBay and that's our number one go-to if we're trying to piece in part and break these lots down into um, you know, smaller saleable items. That's a great way, that's definitely our go-to. There's Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace um, does compete now directly with eBay. It, it, they didn't in the past, but now you know they have, uh, they're encouraging sellers to not only have local pickup, but also to ship, and they're building a much bigger uh, database of buyers, and they're putting a ton of 
energy and resources into their platform. So Facebook Marketplace is definitely a good way to sell also. Uh, there's Craigslist. Now, Craigslist used to be the go-to for selling just about everything, especially if it was local pickup, for years and years and years. Fortunately, over the years, Craigslist has sort of uh, been filled with a lot of scammers and people trying to take advantage of people buying stuff on Craigslist. So a lot of people tend to shy away from that now. Uh, we'll, we'll still use Craigslist. Um, it works really well for things like boats and campers and trailers and you know, big, big, large items. You have to be really, really careful, um, you know, not to be scammed. But um, as far as using it for tools, uh, we don't really waste our time anymore with Craigslist and tools, especially, you know, smaller purchases. If it's not going to bring at least 500 bucks, we're probably not going to put it on Craigslist. Um, if you're selling used tools, Amazon's probably not the option for you. If you're selling brand new tools and you have an, an, an Amazon seller account, then selling on Amazon is a great way to sell tools. But, you know, primarily you're looking at new in the box stuff, sells best on Amazon. There's also a bunch of apps that you can use for selling stuff that make it really easy. You can use like OfferUp and uh, there's a whole handful of different platforms now that you can use. There's Mercari, which is another platform um, it's not my first pick for tools, although we have sell tools. What we'll do is, is we'll use a cross-listing software that puts it on eBay, Marketplace, and Mercury uh, all at the same time. And, you know, well, I, I think we've sold like rigid pipe wrenches and we've sold a whole bunch of specialty type of, uh, um, you know, trade tools for electricians and stuff like that. Um, it's not my first go-to, but you know, if you're already using that platform, then, you know, have at it. Uh, why not cover your, your ground on, on, you know, a bunch of different websites. Another website to use to sell tools or to sell everything in the house is a website called Max Sold. Uh, Max Sold, owned by a friend of mine, a business started up in Canada and has satellites all over the country. Um, uses a software platform for you to be able to upload your items, your tools, or your house goods and uh, help you with the processing of the credit cards and they already have an existing buyer base. So um, that's a good option too. Might be worth looking into. So let's just look at some tools and figure out like how we would sell these. So, you know, you could, if you were selling on eBay, you could Put a, I may not sell this one hammer, but you know, if you had three hammers, you could sell three decent hammers on eBay, maybe ask $25, $30 for those, especially these heavier framing hammers. Those are always good hammers. Um, specialty stuff. I mean, you could even put it all in one big lot and sell it that way. Um, this is how a local auction company would probably sell it. They would sell one big lot like this to a homeowner that wanted some hammers or uh, to a reseller that wanted to break it down. If someone in auction can buy this lot for $20, $25, they may be able to break it up and you know double or triple their money. Things like this. I would probably take all of the handled screwdrivers and nut drivers and put those together in a lot, sell that. So, you know, lots like this. Pipe wrenches have always been a good seller for us. Uh, they are heavy, so they're fairly expensive to ship. But, you know, if you wanted to take time to clean this up and do all that, if we were retailing it, we would. But whereas we're wholesaling this lot out, we'll sell this to a reseller. They'll pick it up for, you know, 20, 20 30 bucks. They'll double, triple their money, and we'll let them clean it. So things like these big, long bar clamps, um, you know, they're awfully long, they're expensive to ship because they're heavy, and they're oversized packaging. Um, I would probably either sell something like this in a local auction, or I would um, put them on, like, Facebook Marketplace with local pickup. All these handle tools, vice grips, pliers, cutters, uh, gosh, you know, you could break a lot like this up and do... Four or five sets of pliers for $15. You could do, you know, a lot of cutters. That could be a separate lot. That would be another 15. These specialty pliers, you know, that would be another 10 or 15. You know, oh, look, there's another one you could add to it. Now make it a lot of four. There's $25, $30 there. 
So here we have a jigsaw. You know, jigsaws still sell. Um, you know, craftspeople use these, and carpenters will occasionally use these. Um, a good item to sell, but you know, where are you going to sell it? Uh, you know, probably not on eBay. It's just a little bit heavy and a little bit big to be selling on eBay. I would probably sell this on Facebook Marketplace. I'd offer a local pickup, and that'd be my best bet. So sometimes mixing and matching things is a good way to be able to get more than one type of buyer for your item. Like, for example, if one of these wrenches is Craftsman and the other is Snap-on, well, by putting Craftsman and Snap-on crescent wrenches in your title line, you may be able to get uh, a larger audience to, you, to look at your product. So here we've got some clamps. These clamps will sell as one lot. We'll put them all together. Probably ask $25 or $30 for those. Uh, our choice to sell those would be eBay. Here's an item that we're selling on eBay. I think I paid five bucks for this in an estate. And, you know, this is listed, I think, for like 65 or 75 bucks. And it's got a bunch of watches. It hasn't sold yet, but um, little specialty stuff like this. Uh, those are usually always good sellers. So, look, here's a little small compressor. Um, it still works, but, you know, it's got some rust on it and it's kind of beat up. Um, I don't think we paid much for this if we paid anything for it at all. Um, I probably would not list this online only because I wouldn't want a bad review if the buyer wasn't happy with it. This is something I would just throw out at a yard sale, you know, or um, put in a big lot with other stuff and, you know, sell it locally and not get too involved. Um, just give somebody a good deal and make it move quickly. You can buy, you know, tray lots like this at a, at a local auction. Um, whether you go to a local auction that uses the internet or whether you go to a live auction, uh, there's a whole bunch of tools here that was sold all in one shot. And you could break stuff like this up and, you know, sell some of these things on the internet, you know, like some of these things used for drywall. I mean, you could get $10 for that. And there's some fasteners and some electrical things that, you know, these are all things. Oh, look, there's all kinds of fasteners. Um, that's a whole other category. Gosh. There's people that just put little baggies of screws and bolts together and sell those that way. Um, that's a great way to make some money, I'll tell you. You can um, buy these big boxes of miscellaneous fasteners at yard sales and split them up and make a fortune doing that. We, we've done a lot of that. And some of the things that do best for us are like little cabinet hardware hinges and, and, and drawer pulls. You know, it's funny, sometimes we'll see like dressers on the side of the road, right? You know, for free. And when I'm driving by, I'm thinking about grabbing it. And it's not because of the dresser. I'm going to take the dresser and I'm going to bust it up and throw it in a wood pile. What I want is all the drawer pulls. Because all those little hardware drawer pulls, whether they're, you know, the colonial type, like, here, I'll show you. Like, you see the pulls on this dresser right here? Sometimes if the dressers are damaged... You know, you can just take those pulls off and th they'll pay $30, $40, sometimes $50 for the drawer pulls. Bust up the dresser, just keep the pulls. So if you're selling, you know, tools as part of an estate, um, you know, uh, you just got, you've just got all these tools, you know, grandpa passed away and you're going to sell the house and, you know, you're cleaning out the garage. Um, you know, you can do a yard sale, nothing wrong with that. Or you can call a local auction company. You can call an auction company like us. If you're in Massachusetts or southern New Hampshire and you need a hand clearing out your house, selling all your personal property, uh, you know, give us a call. Uh, the, the link and the contact information is below in the comments. Just uh, give us a call. But if you're in a different part of the country and you have to sell tools, there are a lot of general merchandise type auctions that you can find uh, on the internet. Uh, just search local auctions, see what comes up. Um, you can use a site called Auction Zip. Auction Zip. They are one that uh, will will uh, help you find local auctioneers, auction companies in your area. So it's our intention to do a weekly vlog covering a wide variety of different subjects uh, in appreciation for our auction buyers, our YouTube subscribers, and our Facebook followers. If you found value in the contents of this video and you're watching it on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, like, and comment below. 
Thanks again. We appreciate your support and comments. Until next week, we'll see you again on Resellers Network.